Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back and today we want to take a look at the meta, how it will look like once we are getting the new Barnas hits to T elements and also to Sprite of course. So uh, right now we are in the old format but on uh, at the end of the season on the 30th of August we will get the new ban list and the cool thing is that we can look at some tournaments that have happened already and uh, they will show us how the new meta could look like uh, going forward when T elements and also Sprite gets their ban. So what we are having here is a tournament that was played under the old list and you can see there are mostly Telemet decks here in the top I think this is top 16 and you can also see first place went to a Telemet list no surprise here we have the Merli still there even though the symbol for being forbidden is already here in Master Duel meta second place Telemet no big surprise here third place we have a Dragon Link which this is also no surprise in a, in a format where there are a lot of Telemet Dragon Link is definitely one of the best decks even maybe the best deck as I have argued in my most recent video that you can check out on the info point um we are talked about the best decks to reach master with in august and then the fourth place also a tlm deck list so yeah this is the format that we know this is the format that we are basically don't want to play anymore we are uh, we are sick of it but let's look at what could happen with the new format so we hop right in here let's let's do this first the master cup so this is a top 16 breakdown and you can see here we have three so this is under the new band list now we have three rickers on avalon two dragon link two brand SBR, one sword soul one pendulum magician one exorcist one sprite melfi one mathmac one sprite runic one chaos one punk kashira and one at ignister without mathmac so really interesting here really diverse this is the first thing that uh, we we take a look at this is really diverse you can also see it here in the decade meta weekly this is also really diverse we will look at over this in a moment but you can see uh, we are heading into a really diverse format and of course we will get the purely cards uh, if this is correct but until now everything has been correct when it comes to the league so we will get purely but i also think that purely will not be a super dominant deck um it seems to be the case that we won't get the full purely package that we will miss one card which is a big card that makes a big difference so we'll get a weaker version of purely which i think will be somewhere here in the top so you would maybe see two poorly decks in here or maybe maybe three but maybe only one poorly deck we don't know we will have to see how good this will be in the best of one format poorly has a big problem that will uh, basically come to the light when we get the full kashtira package uh, that they don't have in the tcg and i will talk about this in a future video but yeah you can see it's super diverse there is one, everything basically in here but not tier elements uh, note here that in this uh, tournament there is a tier element list we will look about this in a moment and you can see first this is going to a sword so this is really cool for all of you that have maybe used the secret pack to get this deck really strong deck and obviously is stronger uh, in a format where there is no such an oppressive deck as t elements and then this deck can shine a bit more so the power level of the whole meta will go down a bit until kashtira full support comes then i think the power level will go up a bit again because uh, full power kashtira is a stronger deck than is full power puri so puri is will be a strong deck will be a strong contender one of the best decks um but will not push the power level up as high as will kashtira or other decks that come in the future then uh, we can see here their second place there is rikas and avalon really nice i uh, have played this deck uh, um, as you have uh, seen on the master on the road to master list this season it's really fun it's really cool it's not that expensive i will make a guide uh, over about this um this deck and i think in a best of free format which this top 16 is this deck is way better and then in the best of one form because you don't need to run cards like evening match or dark rule in your main deck which this person still did i wouldn't do i would put this into the side deck because this is the magic of the side deck of course you can see the people were still expecting a lot of tier elements that's why there are the biscuits in the side um yeah so i will put these uh, cards here in the side deck and then uh, when going second put them in so that you can when going first have a bigger engine but of course if you play a best of three you do not know which one of you wins the coin toss so you might be going second on your first game so then it's obviously comes in handy having these cards in the deck uh, what's cool about the deck is this can run with 60 cards this can run with 40 cards this is quite cheap you do not need the therion uh, king regulus engine though i think it's pretty cool and this is just a cool card in my opinion as an omni negate we have brand despair here still a deck that works besides brand infusion being at one and this is a 60 card version without grass as you can see here so this still worked uh, apparently we have i think where we have a spring and skate we have triple desmond tragedy which you can obviously use uh, via your golden sarcophagus or your foolish burial to get to your branded fusion and we have a triple arrow of darkness which makes it more consistently but we also have of course triple fusion deployment which gets you into your blazing cartesia or one of your triple albas 
passes. So if you have these on the field, then you could obviously also go into the Albion, which then is basically the same as having a branded fusion landing on your Mirror Jade in the end if you want to go the basic branded fusion line. So obviously this still works with one branded fusion and the stack shows it. And then you can see here what I'm talking about, triple uh, Dark Room No More, triple evenly matched in the side deck. I think that's how it's supposed to be. I'm not quite sure why everyone is side decking Dark Room No More, but that's a different point. And then we have here Dragon Link, which this is still obviously, uh, even though Telemet will leave the meta game, um, but it would it will still be there, but it it won't be as oppressive as it was before. Uh, Dragon Link is still strong because the Bestials just are such a strong engine in general, uh, which uh, thanks to the the branded regain, which can resummon them all the time and then draw cards all the time. One of the best um, like consistency and 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 grind game engines that there is in the game. And this person decided to take basically the 40 list, maybe put a Rocket Caliber in, and then took a Shira Fenrir, uh, which I can understand. This card is just amazing, even though there is no synergy between this and the rest of the Dragon Link engine. And then we have top eight, uh, Exorcista, which um, still is still a strong deck. Uh, will be weaker now because it was a pretty nice hard counter, especially with the shifters against T elements. But still a strong deck that can make an impressive going first board. Also can can be a nice going second with uh, main deck evenly matched here. Also with the uh, option to go Zeus. Every deck that can make Zeus is always a deck that can do something going second, of course. And now Zeus is way better because Zeus against T elements was basically shit because you would uh, get rid of all their board and then in the in the graveyard all the effects would trigger. So Zeus will be way better right now, which means XYZ decks will Will be better so that's nice for exorcista it's really unfortunate that there is still a secret pack for them i would love to build the deck but it's way too expensive without a secret pack then we have at agnista without the mathmac package which is interesting which i think the mathmac circular just makes every cybers base deck better so but it's cool to see that they were still uh, reaching a, a good position without it um also a deck that is not that expensive you can see the uh engine party of at is uh, basically there are no ultra rares you need silent mining but this is structure deck then we need one of these, um, the Towers Monster, and then the Dark Templar. And this guy is running two Access Code Talkers because, in theory, this is an important card to finish your opponent. And in theory, your Unicorn or your opponent's Kashiro Unicorn or the Diabolus, the Mind Hacker, can get out rid of this card. And then you basically need a second one. This will be very interesting when uh, Kashiro Full Power comes out if people will craft another Access Code Talker just for this. Keep in mind, we only have one Zeus, so you can't get uh, put two Zeus in to have a Zeus uh, to be able to beat Kashira going second so this will be interesting when the full power comes out but we will talk about this in the future really nice that this works I'm really happy for this diversity here and then we can see Runic not too rare, which this makes a lot of sense, was the strongest deck when Runic first came out. The Runic engine is still one of the best engines in the game, even though it has some hits here. It's still an amazing engine, placed evenly matched in the main, interesting here. And this is a really cool going sec. Uh, this is a really cool best of third, a uh, best of three card, a pointer of the Red Lotus, which you can uh, use uh, going first, and then you can just pay uh, 2,000 life points and reveal all cards in your in your hand and then look at your opponent's hands and select one card and remove that card until the opponent's next end phase. So you can basically, this is so strong, you can use this card and then uh, note here that this is not uh, once per turn. So if you have three of them in your starting end, you could get rid of three of your opponent's hand cards, though obviously then you need a one one card starter, something like a Sprite Blue or, or maybe something else, Aperia and Sprite Blue, I don't know, because obviously then you only have two cards left in your hand and you also need to build a board. But interesting card here that only makes sense in a best of three format. Then we have the Kashti Punk deck, which if you want to run the strongest Kashira version right now, you would run it like this. Obviously, when Kashira full power comes out, you won't run it with the, or you can still run it with the Punk engine, but the, the pure version will be better. Yeah, and that's it for this tournament. Let's look at the next one, Decade Meta Weekly. Also with the new band list, we can see three by Despia, two Naturia Runic, which I think we have not seen in the other in the other tournament, but this will be one of the biggest winners. This is a strong deck with basically no limits to it in the TCG. The tree is limited to one because it's such a strong card. Um, I think with our T elements, which is one of the biggest weaknesses of this deck, um, this deck will be way better and we will see uh, it in uh, on the ladder way more. But don't you worry, this is definitely not as annoying as our other runic or maybe pure runic lists. This is definitely a fine deck to play against, in my opinion. Burnt SBR three times, Naturia two times, Strangling one, Fur Hire one, Labyrinth one, Lyris Crybriad one, Mirrences one, Pendulum Magician one, Scareclaw one, Spite one, Sorcerer one, T elements one, Thunder Dragon one. So this is really nice. I also like the fact 
fact that T Limit is not dead dead, but that people can play T Limit and be some somehow successful with it, even though the deck has uh, gotten some hits. I don't like if they kill decks. This is really lame because uh, T Limits in general, from a mechanical standpoint, is a really cool deck. So one of the coolest deck in my opinion in the game. It's really um, I like this random factor with the milling and stuff. That's really cool. So I think it's nice that it's still in the game. First leg was taken by Lyrus Tribigate. This is cool. This is definitely a rogue-ish deck. Uh, I'm not sure uh, if uh, Telemans not being around that much helps this deck a lot because I'm not really sure how this deck operates. I've, I know that they have like a one-turn kill with these little birds here, but pretty cool to see a rogue-ish deck take the first place. And then we have Naturia Runic here in second and third place. A note here that there is no Mudora package anymore, uh, so no Shuffler package anymore because you don't need it anymore. Not every deck needs to play Shufflers because element is not as oppressive anymore. This is quite nice. Otherwise, a pretty standard list here. Naturia Runic, really cool, really strong deck. I still have my Naturia Mole Crickets from the Synchronized Cosmos pack that I uh, crafted back then because I really love the deck. It's really cool. Then we have uh, a mix of Kashtira together with Draco's Lair together with, uh, there are also Valence cards here. I'm not quite sure how this operates, so I can say a lot of uh, of things to uh, Pendulum decks. I don't like Pendulum decks in general. I, I, I liked the um, Endymion deck that I played. This was really cool, but uh, all in all, uh, Pendulum, not my kind of thing. I think most, not most people's kind of thing, but it's really cool that you can take a Pendulum strategy and uh, do good with it in a tournament, because I think Pendulum, when it comes to all of the uh, mechanics that have recently been added to Yu-Gi-Oh! is the worst one or the least represented one, so it's nice to have it show here in the tournament. Then we have my Despia. You can see uh, the guy is playing Gold Sarcophagus, Foolish Burial, playing two Desmond Tragedy, two Spring and Skid to ma basically make up for the loss of the branded fusion so spring its kit minus one card from the hand is then a branded fusion so you can see the deck still works without uh, the additional branded fusion uh, this is nice this deck should work because this is one of the most fun strategies this is one of the most complex strategies a deck where you really have to think about what plays you want to do and how you want to do them and i think Yu Gi Oh needs more of this um then we have Thunder Dragon, uh, really cool. You can see Denko Seka here, which is a Labyrinth counter card. Um, really, really cool. Um, they, of course, can cannot really uh, take as big of an advantage of this Bissier package as before, because Telemet is not running rampant anymore. But it's really nice seeing a rogue strategy be on top here. And then we can see a Runic Fight for Hire, which is definitely a really cool deck and really strong deck in the best of one also. I would have uh, made this deck, um, uh, if not for the... Fossil decks here, you basically want to run three of these and I don't want to craft them. I could, but I just don't want to. I think this is a really funny deck with triple engine here, runic engine, fight fire engine, sprite engine. Um, and I think uh, that uh, sprite, the sprite engine is still strong enough to be implemented in a lot of decks. We will see a pure list here as well in a moment. Uh, then another branded Despia list, nothing too special here. And then there is a Dragon Link, Drag Unity list, which I'm not quite sure how these two engines also Dragon Mate. I'm not sure how these engines work together because I only play the pure Dragon Link. A uh, Dragon Link will uh, be one of the strongest decks, maybe the strongest deck uh, going into the next format. This obviously depends on which Puri cards we will get. If we get all of them, I think Puri could be the strongest. Uh, otherwise, Dragon Link is definitely the contender in my opinion. Opinion. And then we have branded, branded, another branded list. This works, 60 cards, still works with one branded fusion. Sarcophagus, you don't even need grass no more. Uh, no, no, not grass no more. This is dark room no more. That grass looks greener, my reference. This is what I'm talking about. Okay. And then we have here the, this is quite interesting, the Scareclaw list together with the Kashira cards and Visa's Starfrost. And one thing I have to say about this, uh, we will get the next um, archetype in, like not now, but in the future, Manadium, which is the next archetype from the Visa's Visa's Starfrost line or storyline, which of course we will now get Kashira. The first one was Scareclaw, then we have gotten Telemans, then there is Kashira, then there is Manadium. So these are four, and maybe we will get more in the future. This is we don't know right now. Um, so the thing is, right now I won't, I would not really craft them because it's super expensive here. You would have to craft Triple Rykard, Visa Starfrost, the planet three times, and then also stuff like the Tryhard and uh, the Lightheart, which there are no secret packs for this. Um, you could craft them and be quite 
happy with this because these cards will also go into the Manadium deck which will come in the future which is a pretty synchro based deck you will need Visa, Star, Frost, Rykard, the planet and stuff like this so you will be able to use them in a, in a quite a strong deck in the future so if you want to craft them uh, it's not that you can't use them in the future keep that in mind but I also think that once the Manadium archetype con uh, comes out we will get reprints of them for example Visa, Star, Frost will definitely be in a Manadium uh, uh, selection pack I think or we will get secret packs for them so um, I would uh, keep my gems uh, when it comes to this Scareclaw like Visa Starfrost engine because I think this will get some love in the future when Manadium comes out and then we have here the tier limit list you can see together with uh, the punk engine uh, so tier limits will basically have to combine with other engines right now with the Psy punk engine this has happened before uh, some Fenrir stuff here and yeah it's nice to see that this deck is still around uh, but not as oppressive anymore and then we have Labyrinth which also profits from tier limit not being as strong I also think it's nice that there is a backward deck that you can play but Labyrinth is not that oppressive because we have all the floodgates at one this was a pretty nice decision from uh, Konami and way, makes it way more uh, chill so then we have this pure, pride, uh, pure sprite list which has put in hero kits which when this card is special summoned you can summon any number of hero kits so this one gets special summoned you can summon two more uh, this works via your gigantic summoning this and then summoning two more which obviously is nice to have three extra bodies on the field via one gigantic gigantic this is quite strong and uh, yeah you can see this still can work this package or this pure deck will still be good will still be a nice uh, um, deck that you can take to the ladder then we have Marincis, which I think is definitely one of the sleeper good decks in this game it's really nice it's really cheap also you can see in the main deck there are basically no ultra rest that you need I'm not counting Dark Ruin no more because I don't think you need Dark Ruin no more in this deck these are staples here Fenrir is definitely also a staple and uh, you don't need too many B-Rows um, and then you can see we have the Kraken here and then we have you I think you can get away with one of these and this and this so four ultra rares that are um, archetype, archetype ultra, ultra rares and the other ones are basically staples here so a really cheap deck which is really strong if you uh, learn how to play it and then I think this is the last one we have Swordsuit here it's the last one a pretty basic list it's nice that Swordsuit can still compete in this meta environment and will be part of the meta game come the next ban list one last thing so so it's really nice uh, just to, to go back to the top you can see it's really diverse we can uh, expect a really diverse um, format oh this was not the diverse one really diverse here it's really nice um, I think if we get something like this or something like this then we are pretty happy here uh, of course poorly will come but I think poorly will not uh, will, I, I, I'm super sure I'm 100% I'm sure poorly will not be the next elements it's not that strong don't you worry it will be one of the strongest decks but not oppressive but one thing we have to keep in mind is that tier limit will get another wave of support in the future the last one that we know about that's that will be a quite a, a nice wave and uh, I think when tier limit Kashira comes out uh, there will be more people picking up uh, tier limits again let's read the card for everyone who does not know it it's seven stars like all the Kashira cards and it says during the main phase quick effect you can special summon this card from your hand and if you do banish one Kashira or tier cards from your hand or graveyard so obviously this cost is bad for tier limits. you don't want to banish your cards you want to get them to the graveyard uh, so this is bad for tier but it's okay if this card is normal or special summoned you can send the top three cards of either player's deck into the graveyard and if this card is sent to the graveyard by card effect you can send the top two cards of your deck to the graveyard so this is basically a replacement merly because merly was also milling three this is also milling three but obviously this cannot fusion summon this going to the graveyard only sends two more cards and you have to banish a card for this so this is a weaker merly obviously it's not merly you cannot normal summon her, but you know what i mean uh, when it comes to um, sending top three um three of these going into the tier stack will make it uh, way stronger again it will never be as strong as it was before i think but this will push its power level back up a bit i think it will be fine uh, i also think this we will get at three though no need to put it at two or one i think um, but maybe maybe konami will do this putting is it, it at two so we will never um, see full power tier again I don't know but um, at the point where we will get this we will probably also get Kishtira full power and uh, when Kishtira full power comes out then there is even less a reason to play tier so I think uh, the release of this card will be fine I just wanted to mention it and point you to the fact that tier limit will get support in the future but I think it's not that bad so that's it for now I think this is a format that we can look for I think it looks quite nice let me know in the comments what you think of this possible format do you like it would you rather return to the T elements dominant format if you like the video please consider subscribing hitting the thumbs up notification bell this helps out a lot and we will see each other in the next one